The sun is seen by many people as a constant, unchanging source of energy for our planet. However, in reality, the sun is a dynamic, constantly changing ball of gas. These changes directly affect life on Earth. So what's actually going on inside the sun to cause these changes? Well, the sun is basically a massive nuclear reactor where the mass, gravity and pressure fuse together the atoms. It's normally put as fusing together two hydrogen atoms to produce a helium atom, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Two protons combine together to form a deuterium atom, which is basically a heavy form of hydrogen. As they do so, they release a positron and a neutrino. A proton then combines with the deuterium to form a kind of light helium, and releases a gamma ray. Two of these light helium atoms then combine to form a normal helium atom and release two protons in the process. Some of the helium atoms are also fusing together to produce heavier elements. The majority of the fusion reaction currently involves the creation of the helium. The fusion is taking place in the sun's core where the pressure is greatest and generates enormous amount of energy and as such the temperature of the core is about 15 million degrees centigrade. All that heat and energy radiate out to the outer layers of the sun and beyond. Because the gravity and pressure of the core they take a very long time to reach the surface of the sun. Whilst this release of energy is going on, it's also spinning on its axis. But because it isn't solid, different parts rotate faster than the others. The spot at the surface of the sun's equator will take a little over 24 days to complete a rotation, but a few degrees up may take an extra day for the rotation to be complete. This changes deeper inside the sun, at the core and the next layer out called the radioactive zone, where the pressures force the sun to act like a solid body, they all rotate at the same speed. So what happens in this radioactive zone? Well here the molecules are not quite as dense as the core, but still very dense. This makes it very difficult to light to pass through the area. Basically what happens is a photon moves out, absorbed by the gas molecules present, just for a brief period of time, it's then retransmitted again, absorbed by the next molecule it encounters, and so on, and so on, and so on. Like an enormous game of pass the parcel. All this means is that the photon takes a very long time to emerge from the zone, especially as it makes up nearly half of the entire volume of the sun. This next ma major layer is the convective zone. This is where the changes in the sun are focused. Here it is as the name suggests that the heat and other material is carried up to the sun by vast convective currents where the hot gas rises to the surface but as it cools and falls back towards the core where it's heated again and repeats the cycle. However, don't think this process is as quick as it is on Earth. These molecules are still under great pressure and the distance they move are so vast the cycle is actually measured in hundreds of thousands of years. Because of the stirring caused by the convection currents combined with the rotation the heat of the surface of the sun is uneven and changes over time. It's a bit like a boiling pan of water with bubbles and currents reaching the surface. Every so often the bubbles burst and spit boiling water great distances from the surface of the water. A number of these incidents on our sun, be they cool areas like sunspots or hot ones like solar flares and prominences, directly affect how much energy we receive from the sun. This in turn can mean that the earth cools or heats up for a very brief period of time, leading to the slightly misleading term mini ice age, makes people think of massive glaciers and woolly mammoths rather than just a brief period of fluctuation in our sun's output. That's how the sun changes over time.